Hey guys, Roger Help from uh, How To Headquarters. So, you're gonna re-veneer a chimney or even a wooden chimney box. If you're putting cultured stone or this fancy granite veneer stone on, there is a challenge at the beginning. How do you deal with the flashing? A lot of times the house will have already been flashed or if it's a brand new, let's say this is a big plywood chase, they've already run their flashing to that. But the last thing you want to do is set your stones over top of that step flashing, even Steven with the shingles here and go up. A couple reasons you don't want to do that. One, in 30 years, which goes by pretty quick, when they need to re-shingle that roof, they cannot step, step flash underneath your stone. The other one is, and it's significant, all that water and all the rain and uh, the snow particularly, if it's down in this area and you have your stone down in here, you're gonna get water in behind your stone and it's gonna start deteriorating your mortar, frost and whatnot can pull away. If you have a valley or a cricket behind there, you just don't want stone way down here. There's a reason for the last couple centuries they flash chimneys besides just the simple step flashing that gets the shingle situation out. So the solution we've come up with is actually building a bit of a brick shelf or a stone shelf out that we flash and put our stone on. Now I'd love it if you have any better idea the comments below is a great place for it. Uh, I chose Advantech flooring or uh, subfloor material as the material I want to build this out of. You do not want to use treated lumber. We know in when in, in especially in the extreme conditions that a roof is at the treated lumber is going to twist and turn and everything and you don't want that. There are some cement board options though I've found if, if we're going to keep this thing very dry we keep it up off the roof so that there's no way it's going to wick moisture up and I've found this Advantech, the resins in it and everything to be able to handle all the conditions the best of uh, any materials I've found. So I, I usually go six, seven inches of height on these things. Uh, double stack them and I've hammer drilled and screwed this guy in here so this is very secure. Now this is the high end of everything. This is copper uh, flashing. You don't have to do copper. This piece here costs about as much as your first year in college. Uh, but you could get uh, aluminum flashing or regular painted metal flashing. It's really not that much worse. It's a little bit harder to work with. This stuff is so soft that it just does everything you want it to do. Uh, easily, but it's not like it's not like you're doing a, a dramatically for the cost you may be better off with just a regular uh, coil stock metal. So what we've done here is made a step up, down and around. Now you see right now this isn't necessarily doing much, but think about sheets of rain coming down the stone and hitting the bottom here. Here's the whole stone wall hitting the bottom here. You don't want to simply go in and not up because it's very probable the expansion contraction rate here is different than the, your mortar. It's very probable you're going to get a little bit of a crack here. You could easily get water that starts reversing back and the last place you want it to be is behind here. So we have a leg that goes up, down, and over. Now when you do this, when the roofer comes here in 30 years, they're going to say, man, I really appreciate that guy because he did a great job. Now they can just put their flashing underneath this. And we're never, we're always going to make it so it can be folded away uh, with some difficulty. Here we're going to actually use uh, copper nails that are going to nail right in, which is really handy that that's wood because you nail right into that wood and it's there. When the roofers come back, they can pull it away. If you're using a uh, uh, coil stock, just use a regular metal roofing screw and place that metal roofing screw down there. Now all this, I may even show you a further detail, we actually are going to do a cricket on this eventually, but all this contraption here is the same thing, we're trying to kick water away. The guy that taught me flashing, I said, well you got to think about all the evil things that water wants to do. It's not that, he said, he said, just think of it as a curious little droplet of water. And everywhere that that water wants to go, you always want to have your overlap and an underlap. That's what we've got here. Like I even did the detail of this little guy right here to kick water away. I've got this tab here tucked under so that water goes away 
and then this thing here with all of its origami moves is always going to be and that's why this funny little V here is on purpose so that I would deliver water away here now if you come to a spot where you cannot get your origami right and the water potentially could be going the other way I highly recommend Lexol caulk. It's like silicone on steroids. It's a phenomenal, sticky, long-lasting caulk. So in a place, when I'm putting this finally together, I'll probably have that tube of Lexol, and I'll actually put a little dab in here. That's probably about it, uh, but there'll be more spots up above. Then we're going to get that attached, fastened in, and now we can go crazy with our stonework and it's going to also look so much sharper. You don't always realize when you look at a chimney why you like it, but it's often because you'll see it and now when your eyes are open to this, you'll see it on some commercial buildings where they start to stone right at the shingles. It just looks wrong and it won't last. All right, we first showed you the simple area that that front panel, most chimneys that go right through the roof, the front panel would be right here. That's the easiest part to make all the folds and do your flashing for. This gets a little more complicated, but it's not that bad, and I'll help you through it. So, we've got the double layer Advantech. Now you'll notice, I have cut this out. There's always an air space underneath here. We do not want the standing water, the running water off the roof to get wicked up into here and rot the back of this Advantech. And this, where the valley of the cricket comes out, is usually the most water intense area. When this gets re-roofed the second time, they're, they're going to end up putting their flashing, their step flashing, right out on this face. But on the first realm, and this may be 30 years or so, we're going to have water running here and hitting that sub flashing, which is okay in this situation because it's fully flashed and water is going to be allowed to be there. So this panel of copper, again, it doesn't have to be copper, but boy, it is nice to work with. Although you do need a credit reference before you pick this stuff up mm -hmm. at the lumberyard. So this panel of copper. It's also going to ride ever so slightly above the shingles. That the one tricky thing is, when they reflash this, step flashing is a little piece of metal that looks like this, that goes underneath each individual shingle. They've got to be able to tuck that under. So you don't want to fasten like every little piece of this so that they can't bend this back up later to tuck that flashing under. One of the uh, really handy tools for this is these little crimping pliers. They work great for making these small bends and then a regular nippers. There's nothing to it but just thinking where's the water, where's that curious droplet of water gonna go. Now on the back side, I'll show you over here, we just finished. Uh, the cricket. This is where you really want to be doing your best work. Do your good work everywhere, but particularly here because you've got a fair amount of watershed coming in. Uh, there's two ways, there's at least two ways of doing this. One is to do a continual panel like we did on the sides, all the way up and all the way up, parallel panel. The challenge there, amongst others, is that you then have to lay all of your stone on that sliding panel. The smoke here is because it is made in the Adirondacks and the black flies are insane, but smoke really knocks them back. So instead of doing a, a parallel panel with a slope that stone would just constantly be battling us and trying to go down, we're going to do the traditional stepped panel side. The trick to that is to overlap. So what I did here, I put my sub panel on, I actually took a piece of cardboard and made this uh, prototype to make sure I got the angles right, and then I cut my kerf in about two and a half inches. Now this little bugger, it's ready to wrap around, slides in. When I finally install this, I'm going to take that Lexol caulk, which is the best caulk, and I'm going to put one bead of caulk right up here, and then we're going to place this on top. And I'm going to place one copper nail right here, and I'm going to place one copper nail right here. That, there's only about six nails in this whole chimney. And each one, if the roofer had to, they could pull them out. But more than likely, most of the time, they won't even have to be able to pull them out. They can uh, step their step flashing in behind there. That is the majority of what we need to know to make uh, a copper flashing or any sort of a flashing job on a chimney with veneer. 
But this method right here definitely works. We've done this for years. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, if you got anything out of it, please check out the how-to headquarters at our channel. We have a lot of details uh, in the masonry and constru construction trades. And uh, hope this was helpful. Leave a comment below. Please like and subscribe.